Hey what's up guys, Midge HD here. Today I will be reviewing the Virgin Atlantic 747400 by Gemini Jets in a 1 to 200 scale. Check the description in case you missed anything throughout this video. My Facebook, Twitter and Instagram links will be down there. I pre-ordered this from easytoys.com and this is my 36th 747 model and it's my 4th Virgin Atlantic model. Some information about Virgin Atlantic. Their operation space is out of Crawley in the United Kingdom. Main hubs are London Gatwick. London Heathrow and Manchester airports. They were founded on the 22nd of June 1984 and their fleet as of the 18th of September 2016 consists of 39 aircraft. Eight of those are 747-400s. They serve 31 destinations and their 747 routes are from London Gatwick to Cancun, Havana, Las Vegas, Montego Bay and Orlando and from Manchester to Bridgetown, Las Vegas and Orlando and also from Glasgow to Orlando. This aircraft's first flight was on the 19th of September 1998 and delivered to Virgin Atlantic on the 30th of September 1998. The Boeing customer code for Virgin Atlantic is 1R. So let's take a look around the box here. So we've got Gemini 200, Virgin Atlantic, a picture of the aircraft, Boeing 747 400, 1-200 scale. On the back of the box, I've uh, got the typical, um, typical, you know, writing that we normally see. Uh, we have the Boeing license um, and uh, 747 license. Top of the box, the right hand side, the bottom. and the left. And there is the model. Alright guys, the model is now out of the box and we're going to start at the cockpit windows on the port side. Right, so with the cockpit windows, window wipers, pitcher tubes, and static ports, we have the aircraft name Ruby Tuesday, and there's the girl uh, holding the um, the Union Jack as well. LG part of the registration on the gear door. You can also see just on the front of the uh, strut gear strut that's the um, you can see some taxi lights. You'll get a better view from the front later on. Boeing 747-400, Virgin Atlantic titles. Um, I actually prefer this livery over over the uh, old one or the previous one on the 747, but on the A340, I prefer the uh, previous livery. And uh, by the way, this was painted in this billboard livery in October 2010 from the previous livery. The inboard realistic landing lights. Then we have the uh, very good looking uh, General Electric CF6-80C2B1F engine. One thing about this livery I, I do like the most is the um, the colour of the red. It's uh, it it kind of you know it almost glistens really, um, but uh, it's quite uh, I don't know pronounced I guess. So uh, all the fl fam bl the fan blades should spin. So there's a better look at those landing lights and uh, on the side and the side as well okay all right so that will spin it's great to see all 
All right, now onto the winglet, the nice red winglet with the red navigation light. And then back onto the fuselage. I like uh, I like the um, fuselage. It's almost uh, well. It's definitely an off white. It's got a tint of it's like it's it's like it's a cream white, but with a tint of silver or grey, and it uh, it it really looks good, especially with the red. Registration number is GVXLG or Golf Victor X-ray Lima Golf. Virgin titles on the tail and part of the registration on the top of the tail. All right now let's take a look at the APU exhaust. It's a very good looking exhaust, very well detailed. The strobe lights are beneath the exhaust. All right, now to the cockpit windows on the starboard side. All right, we've also got the window wipers, pitot tube, static ports, the uh, girl with the uh, Union Jack uh, aircraft name, Ruby Tuesday, part of the registration on the gear door, Boeing 747-400, which is also just on top, you can just see it, but it's on top of the front cargo container door. It's got a white outline just here. So um, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's more difficult to see on the camera than it is on the actual model when you're looking at it with your bare eyes. Virgin Atlantic titles, the realistic inboard landing lights, it's very very nice looking engines. I love the CF6 engines. Then we have the winglet on the side and the green navigation light. And now onto the fuselage again with the registration number. Also have the rear cargo container door, which I'll point out here. Again, difficult to see because it's painted white right there. And then the bulk bin door is just here. So just to point it out in case uh, you couldn't see it. Virgin titles, part of the registration on the top of the tail. Right, let's take a look underneath the aircraft. All right. Nose gear. Then we have Virgin Atlantic, also there's a tenor, Virgin Atlantic underneath the fuselage, which I'll give you a better look right here. And it looks really nice. Alright, so we've got some knacker ducks, then we have another small antenna just here. Beacon light, main gears, gear doors, Gemini Jets logo, underneath the wing, flap slats, ailerons, we also have the little uh, Jettison nozzle, which is the, um, uh, the you know, fuel, uh, yeah, fuel dump valve. Um, I don't forget what it was, I was just mixing up my words for a second. Uh, underneath the engines, looking very, very nice. And the same on the side, but with the registration number. Two more antennas, the cabin pressure relief valves. 
uh, another antenna and then the APU housing. Now onto the top of the aircraft, the emergency escape hatch for the pilots, anti-collision light, antenna, uh, ADF antennas, on top of the wing, flap slats, ailerons and spoilers. And on this, uh, on the inside of the winglets, we have the Virgin logo. Would be cool to have it on both sides. And the same on this side. Alright, continuing down, we have the SATCOM. And then to the horizontal stabilizers. We have one grey dot near the leading edge, uh, and also two grey dots on each one, uh, just forward of the elevators. They are the logo lights that light up the tail at night time. Okay, now we will go through the seating of the aircraft. All right, so we'll start on the upper deck. Let's make sure it's all in focus properly. There we go, that looks like it is. All right, so on the upper deck, we have premium economy, 20 recliner seats, rows 20 to 24. And that is from here to here, then from here to the back of the upper deck. We have economy, 33 seats, rows 75 to 80. On the main deck, we have upper class, 14 flatbed seats, rows 6 to 12. That is from the nose to the first cabin door. We have... Premium Economy, 46 recliner seats, rows 14 to 19. That's from the first cabin door to the second cabin door. And from the second cabin door all the way to the back of the aircraft. We have Economy, 342 seats, rows 25 to 47 and 49 to 66. With a really dense total of 455 seats. That's uh, it's crazy. To be honest, I wouldn't want to be sitting in the economy personally, but uh, I, I do, I would quite like to fly Virgin, um, one of Virgin's 747s one day, just uh, even if it was just a short trip, it'd be uh, quite, quite nice. Now on to some of the features of the model. We have rolling landing gear. Um, oh, I should have mentioned that this gear, or this wheel, this wheel, this wheel right here, the front one in the towards the center, that was separated. But what I found, unlike what happened with one of my gears once, which I had to glue back onto the little rod that that holds the two gears on, these more actually click into place like there there must be some grooves on the um, metal piece which I didn't check that runs through the hole to connect them together and I think they sort of click on there so before you get your glue if, if your wheels come off check that put it in place and if it clicks and it's not coming off like mine is like it clicks in place well it doesn't have to click but you know it's it's it holds it's not not going to come out then don't glue it um, and I'm pretty pleased about that because if there is a chance of the gear coming off I'd rather have a situation where it can just click into place without you know uh, without requiring glue because um it was almost a hassle once with me uh, almost uh, locked the gears up entirely okay uh, anyway, we'll get back onto the features of the aircraft. So, as I stated, uh, rolling landing gear, uh, most of them roll quite well. Tilting landing gear and the nose gear does swivel. All 
All right, now onto the stand. And we're looking Gemini Jet stand, the wooden base, logo on the bottom. I think it's a, just a bit of glue, which I can I'll take off afterwards. And the blue film, which I'm just going to remove. There we go. Top of the stand, we have the padding so the model does not get, does not get scratched underneath. All right, so let's put it on the stand. And there we go, looking very, very nice on the stand. Gears, for some reason the 7471s, the, the nose gears always uh, are always a little bit um, tight to take out. But at least I know they stay in there. Uh, the magnetic, easy, easy to remove, easy to put back in. And when you want it in the in-flight position, there are gear doors to use if you wish. It's been quite a lengthy review compared to uh, my standard review time. But uh, nevertheless, I hope you have enjoyed. Please leave a, leave a like if you did. Comment to tell me what you think of this model. Tell me if you're going to get it or tell me if you have got it. Um, I know some of you do have it already and you've been sharing pictures uh, and you've been really pleased about the model um, and so am I. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon with this model. It's fantastic. Um, Gemini Jets have again outdone themselves and uh, I couldn't, couldn't be happier really. Um, subscribe for more. Plenty of unboxings on the way. Plane spotting videos to come. Uh, and uh, pretty much all of that kind of stuff. And share this, share this video so that people know about it and see if they want to get this model as well. I mean, it looks just fantastic, to be honest. Anyway, guys, I do hope you have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.